Greetings viewers, welcome back to my channel, and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing and tearing down the K-Line Technologies DC-10 pedal power supply, also commonly known as the juice box. For full disclosure, as in all my videos, I was provided this pedal power supply by K-Line. They asked me to do a review and a teardown, and really asked my opinion of what I think of it, so I will be looking at the insides and also given my opinion of what I think of it. Now this is one of the many models that K-Line makes for pedal power supplies and the DC-10 has been around for a little while. I did do a very in-depth review of their CP206 and 207. You can check out that link here and I will go into some detail of how this is constructed. They're all essentially constructed in a very similar manner. Some of them have minor and minor differences to the circuit design, but they all operate in the same way. Specifically, their isolation, meaning that each of the outputs are isolated from each other, meaning you don't share a common ground bus, for example. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a quick unboxing, and it's packaged very well. Of course, I'm trying to do this with one hand, so it's always a challenge. But here is the juice box. comes in this bag here. And it looks like they give you a bunch of different wires here. And they also give you an instruction manual, which is cool. And there is the wall power supply. Let's see here. That is 18 volts and 1 amp. So that is the input power going into the brick here we got that and it looks like we have mostly 100 milliamps we got a couple high current we got a high current one here but it's mostly 100 milliamps now this should take care of a lot of the analog pedals that they have and also about 90 percent of all the pedals that are on the market today this is not a power supply that you would want to use for your digital pedals digital pedals tend to be a higher amp amperage draw so probably in uh, greater than 300 milliamps or greater than 500 milliamps and that usually will come with its own power supply but for most of the pedals out there this will be more than adequate here it is out of the bag and when this is plugged in the power light will light up here i think it's blue and when you have a plug uh, inserted into one of these outputs then it will turn blue and if it is drawing greater than the rated current then that light will go out indicating a short circuit and that will go into protect mode to protect the insides from shorting out so a few things when it comes to talking about isolated power supplies what does that mean well, isolation is a couple things. The first part of isolation is isolating the wall power. It could be dirty coming in and cleaning that up and then running it through this brick. And then the output power that's coming out of these plugs here needs to be filtered and also isolated, meaning not having a common bus or common ground with your wall power. That eliminates any potential for ground loops between your amplifiers and any of your other equipment. The other aspect of isolation is making sure that after all that filtering is done from the wall, that each of these power outputs are separated from each other, meaning that no, output one, for example, doesn't influence output two or the last output here. If this one were to short out, it's not going to cause any issues with the other outputs. That way you have the cleanest possible power going into your power supply, which is not going to introduce noise into your signal. Now the way this isolation works in this particular pedal, now given this is a budget pedal power supply, but the circuit design is actually very solid, and this is how they do it. They bring 120 volts in, this brick is uh, handling the rectification and the filtering back down to 18 volts DC, and you can see the ferrite choke here for any uh, radiated emissions, and then that 18 volts is going to come in here, and that 18 volts is then going to get further isolated by then being converted back to AC on these transformers. So this is the primary and this is your secondary. And there's your primary and here's your secondary. These are one to one. So if I have 18 volts coming in here, I'm gonna get 18 volts coming out. They use a bunch of oscillator chips underneath to create that DC and moving it back and forth. Push, pull, push, pull. And that is gonna go onto the secondary. You're then gonna take that very high frequency AC voltage and you're going to rectify it back to dc and then dump it into these caps now you have very clean 
18 volts coming in. And then you can go and get ready to put the, that voltage on the output, but we have to go through one more step. So the final step after we have some stable isolated DC here is then we need to regulate it down to the uh, voltage that we want. In this case, nine volts, 12 volts, and then 18 volts here on the end. And that's done using very common linear voltage regulators. And you can actually see the part number right there. There's an L7809, 09 meaning nine volts. And then over here is your 12 volts. And then over here is your 18 volts. You have a little bit of capacitance for each one of those 9 volt, 12 volt, and 18 volt stages to power these linear voltage regulators to filter it out. There's further capacitors, diodes, and uh, some inductors that are further filtering that voltage so that it is nice and clean coming out. They also have current limiting resistors so that in the case of a short circuit, you don't blow out these regulators. You'll just put all that power into heat into a very large resistor until you correct the short circuit. So that basically is a soft limiter so it doesn't basically burn things up. Now for those that are interested, here is my meter. We're going to go and zoom out a little bit. And this is connected to the tip or the negative side. And here's the, this should show I'm probing on the tip, which is the negative. And as you can see, OL meaning it's over limit meaning that it's a very high resistance or there's no connection at all. And I can go to the different in, uh, outputs right here, and there is no connection to ground on the incoming side. Now here is the test that you've seen in other YouTube videos that people will do, and this is what will immediately turn people off to budget power supplies. And... I can understand that sentiment, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. What you're seeing is a very low resistance between the ground pins of the first two outputs. All I'm basically doing is using ohms to see what the difference in potential is. And it's true. Yes, the, uh, the first two outputs, the second two outputs, and the third pair of, out of outputs here are all connected together because each of these transformers have multiple secondary windings. So one winding does the first two and another winding does the second two, so on and so forth. They have to make some sacrifices in the form factor and on the size and the circuit design in order to keep the cost down. Ideally, in the more expensive power supplies, you're going to have a separate winding for each of these outputs, but then that adds the cost. You're going to need more of these switch mode transformers inside. They do a great job with the isolation from the wall power, which really does solve 99% of all of your ground loop buzzes or any kind of noise coming in. Yeah, it's ideal to have separate grounds, isolated grounds from each of these outputs, but it's not always most practical at the price point that this particular pedal power supply is sold at. And just to prove my theory here, let's go and test the ohms between the first and the third output. And sure enough, there is infinite ohms. So the first and third and the first and fourth outputs are isolated from each other because they have a different secondary winding feeding the linear voltage regulators. Now, as a quick short circuit test to make sure that it's doing what it needs to do to protect itself, we got 9.01 volts on the second output here that we're measuring. And then here is the first output. I'm going to go and short it out briefly. And we should see a, a quick drop in voltage, but it should bring it right back up to 9.01 volts. And that secondary winding should be protected and it should have enough capacity to keep powering the short circuit and also the second channel here. I'm doing it very quickly because I don't. it's just going to waste power and heat there, and you don't want to stress out the components, but it will actually protect itself because then all that heat will go into that re large resistor underneath. So it's doing what it should. So it is very tightly regulated with the linear voltage regulators, and I don't see a problem with that. I think that's actually really good. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here, and my final thought's going to be that this pedal power supply is very good for the price point that it's sold at. It is far better than using a simple daisy chain, which is most certainly going to add more noise to your signal. 
you do achieve isolation from the wall power via the transformers inside and you do have some pretty tight regulation on the outputs yes you do share a common ground in each of these pair of outputs but i don't think you're going to have um, that much of an issue it's only in certain special cases where you really want to have true isolation on all your pedals and if you're going to be running analog pedals then that shouldn't really be that big of an issue at all uh, if you do have any problems with this you know feel free to shoot me a message i am plugged in with k-line and their product specialists and their engineering team if there's something that i missed or if you're having an issue we can try to troubleshoot it for you i do have a couple more power supplies that i will be reviewing from k-line in the near future be on the lookout for it till then guys thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel i'll catch you on the next video